once again, as we continue the series, Let's Go Crazy, we're talking about the process of becoming greater. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, whether you know it or not, regardless of where you are in life, regardless of your background, regardless of all of your experiences and the things that you went through, all of you in here have the potential and the possibility to become greater. Um, we've been studying the last couple of weeks concerning the law of the seed. And what we discovered is every seed has the potential for greatness already within itself. The seed has within itself everything it needs to succeed. Look at somebody and say something is in you. Something is in you. Something is that, that is great. Something that is more and that, that is a greater level than what you're operating in now is already in you. And sometimes this may be difficult to receive. Sometimes this may be difficult uh, to understand or hear it or process in these words in your spirit. Because if you've been told all of your life that you're nothing, if you've been told all of your life that you are, you, you, you must stay within those perimeters of other people's opinion. Uh, sometimes it's difficult when God desires to take you to that next dimension and that next level. Because a lot of times your worst enemy is your own mind. You're fighting, you're struggling within yourself to break out of the shell that everybody else has put you in. Opinions, people, your past, your hurt, your problems, and all the complications of life will fight the greatness that God has put on the inside of you. But look at your neighbor and say, it's time to break out. It's time to break out. I come to tell you today that if you're in here, God is getting ready to pull out of you the greatness that he put in you before you was in your mother's womb. You came here packaged for success. Everything that you need to be successful is already in you. Yeah. And so what we need to understand today is that not only do you have the potential and the possibility for greatness, God demands greatness for you. Yeah. God will not accept anything that less than your best and, your, and, and you operate in the greatness that he has put in you. Pay attention. The Bible says that God created us in his image. In other words, God departed an aspect or a part of himself within us all. And so you are made in God's image. And once you begin to recognize that, when you look in the mirror, it will change your perspective. Sometimes we become subjected to the images that other people have painted in our minds. And we become limited by our limited perspective. But when you look in the mirror, you have to reinforce the idea that you've been made in the image of God. When you look in the mirror, you have to not only see you, but you got to see him. Mm -hmm. Look at the neighbor and say, what are you looking at? What are you looking at when you look in the mirror? You have to recognize that there's a divine part of God resting on the inside of you. The Bible says in verse 28 that he says, be fruitful. Somebody say, be fruitful. In other words, God has commissioned and commanded you to be productive. He expects it and he demands it. Look at somebody say, you're supposed to be productive. In other words, you're supposed to be effective in whatever you're doing. Yes. Hallelujah. Then he says, be fruitful and multiply. The word multiply actually means to become greater than what you are. Oh, God. I need somebody to preach to today. God has already commanded you to become greater than what you are now. So I come to tell you, you have to fall out of love with who you are now. Ooh, you got to fall out of love with who the person you are now. Because God, I don't care what level of excess, success you have achieved up until this point. I don't care if you got a degree. I don't care what you have accumulated in life. God say, I'm calling you to your next dimension. Because I have already given you the commission to multiply. Amen. Multiply it means to become more than what you are. And to become greater than what you are. Somebody say, I'm commissioned to become greater. Now look at Genesis 2 and 8. Genesis 2 and 8. You can just give me a little bit more sound. Just a tad bit. Genesis 2 and 8. Remember, he has made man in his image. Hallelujah. 
And he has commanded them to be fruitful and multiply. He's saying, Adam, Eve, I'm expecting great things from you. Look at your neighbor and say, God is expecting great things from you. You need to say that in their ears because some people in here have been through so many tragic situations that they feel that the possibility for greatness no longer applies to them. But I come to tell you, you are not subjected to your past and your pain. Regardless of what you've been through, the command for greatness still applies to you. Oh, look at somebody say, the command for greatness still applies to you. I know you are hurt. I know you've been disappointed. I know you have experienced all type of setback. But God still expects greatness from you. Why? Because the potential is still in you. The potential is still in you. Genesis 2 and 8. The Lord God planted, shall plant it. A garden eastward in Eden, and there, shall there. The law of location. Shout there again. Yeah. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And so listen now. Listen to the agricultural terminology that God is using to communicate with his creation. He has created man and then he tells him to be fruitful and multiply. Listen to the terminology. Fruitful, multiply. Now the Bible says that after he has created Adam, he put him in the garden. Why? Why did he put him in the garden? Out of all the locations, why would you create man and drop him in the garden? Because God says, in this season, he's educating you by your environment. <laughs> we, we, we have to get beyond the, the mythological value of scripture and begin to look at the deeper essence of it. God put them in a, in a garden because he was educating Adam and Eve based on the environment that he put them in. In other words, he wanted them to learn something from the place where they were. He has already told them to be fruitful and multiply. And so now he drops them in the garden to see this principle exemplified. They're surrounded by flowers and trees and seeds and everything that's producing, everything that's growing. And I come to tell you today that God will put you in an environment that will teach you what you need to know to go to your next level. Look at somebody say, I don't care what you in, God may have dropped you there. What are you learning from your environment? When God desires to take you to a next dimension, he will drop you in an environment that will challenge you, that will force you to grow, that will follow God. Look at somebody say, recognize your God, recognize your God. Now you can't discount your God because there's a few weeds there. In other words, because of the negativity that's in your guard, your weeds are included in the learning process. So I'm trying to tell you today that the job that you own now, the people that's getting on your nerve, that's a weed, but they're included in the guard, and they're designed to help you in God. They're designed to help you go to your next level. It's something that you need to learn. Your family was a guard that you was raised in. And even as crazy as your family may have been, that was a garden that God put you in to cultivate you, to teach you how to raise your family. I look at somebody and say, I can't make them same mistakes. That's why he put you there. Oh, God. Look at somebody say, education by environment. God will put you in an environment to teach you what he has put in you to take you to the next level. Somebody say, I'm destined for greatness. If we're going to grow crazy, then we're going to have to learn to take advantage of the learning experiences that God exposes us to. Look, look at somebody say, look around. What are you learning? What are you learning? Why did God put you on that job? Why did God put you in that position? Why did God expose you to that? God will never expose you to something that he does not desire you to experience. Wow, you're not listening to me today. If God exposed you to it, it's preparation for somewhere he's taking you. What am I talking about? God has put you in some places that you didn't qualify for, but God said that was preparing you for what I'm getting ready to take you because it is time for you to grow crazy. He's exposing you to greater because he's expecting greater. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, wake up. You, you, it's time for you to go to that next level. 
time for you to go to that next dimension, but your problem is if you don't understand education through environment, well, I'm in school. You may not be in college, but you're in school. Yeah. Every day is an, is an opportunity to learn something, but you have to be conscious of that environment. Yeah. Look at somebody say, he put him in the garden. Listen now, the Bible says in, in Genesis 2.8, it says, listen, it says, the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow. Look at, look at all this growth around him that is pleasant to the sight, good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now listen, 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 listen. Now, 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 God, if you read the text, God commanded them not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But why did he place it there? Come on now, right. Why did he put the tree in the garden Put them in the garden and tell them not to touch it. <laughs> because everything, when God desires to take you to your next level, he would, he would desire for you to come to a place of discipline where he can place you around the very thing he told you not to touch and you still won't touch it. Oh God, look at somebody say, you may have been touching some stuff you shouldn't have been touching, but God put you around it so you can get me young. Come on up in here. So you can learn obedience. He exposed you to the very thing he told you to leave alone. Oh, they don't want me to preach this in here. That's why he rolled up on you this week. That's why you got that text at time of the morning. Because God will expose you to the very thing he told you not to touch. Because he says, if you love me, oh God, you will keep my commandment. So oftentimes God will place you around the very thing that can cause you to disobey him to prove your love for him. Yeah, yeah. And see, I know I'm growing. Look at somebody say, let's go crazy. I know I'm growing when I had the opportunity to do it, but I did. Yeah. I'm not talking to nobody in here. Look at somebody say, I had the opportunity, but I did. Now all of you that be here, just put your head down. Because everybody in here didn't die. Everybody in here didn't pass that test. Education through environment. Through environment. Look at somebody say, you got, you got to learn. You got to learn. If you're going to go to your next level, if you're going to grow crazy, if you're going to become greater, then you have to learn to receive the education from your environment. Now listen, I have, I have something that I want to reveal to you in Scripture. Listen, listen. <laughs> 